Uh, good afternoon to all. I, I welcome you all to this session. Um, actually, this session uh, we planned. Uh, I planned with uh, Matt Young uh, because of his uh, personal emergency. He couldn't make out. So Matt Young is uh, uh, okay. We both from HP Helion, and uh, he leads the uh, HP uh, Helion product uh, cloud operation strategy, and he also the co-founder of the uh, service called the Monasca. And I am Kanagaraj Manikyam, and uh, um, I am the heat core reviewer. And I have like a long years experience uh, in various area in uh, data center, server automations, storage automations, etc. And last three years uh, I have been working with OpenStack. And I am also trying to bring up a new service called uh, Namos. Uh, it does uh, once OpenStack is deployed, it does order discovery, configuration, plug-in, plug-out, device management, etc. So today's session is uh, heat auto scaling with uh, Monasca. Okay. So the moment you say any cloud service or like any cloud applications, it involves like development, deployment, and maintaining its life cycle. So here, as a cloud application or cloud service, uh, the owner. You concentrate on the development; the rest will take care of. Rest we will take care for you, like the deployment and maintaining its life cycle. So how we are going to do that? We will see in the upcoming slides. So we see like why or what auto scaling and how we are use we can use auto scaling for a given cloud applications, followed by a demo and question and session. So, what is auto scaling? <laughs> Sorry. So, auto scaling is a cloud computing feature that enables the user community to scale their cloud service or the applications based on the situations arise to either scale up or scale down. Here, cloud service could be of any nature. It can be of infrastructure as a service, or a platform as a service, or even software as a service. So, if you look at um, in general, there are three kind of uh, auto scalings: so scheduled, reactive, and preactive. Proactive. The schedule will be really helpful when you know upfront that that is the time the load is going to be up or down, like Thanksgiving Day or a big sale day, etc. So, the reactive is it will be very useful in a situation where Say you are coming up the new applications and uh, new cloud applications, and you are going to launch. During that time, you don't know like whether how it will be the user usage, whether it's going to be a huge or it's going to be lesser. We cannot predict. So, in a reactive mode, somebody will be monitoring your cloud applications, and when things going up or down, it will notify the respective person to take care of the scale up or scale down. So, in those kind of situation, reactive will be very useful. The third one is predictive. Okay, so you have been running your application for a quite a while, and you have history of data. Based on that, you can make a prediction. So in that scenario, we can go for a predictive auto scaling. So in OpenStack, we are having the reactive mode of auto scaling, and there are two kind of uh, auto scaling. One is uh, horizontal or vertical. The moment you say horizontal, you will scale up the number of servers. The moment is a vertical, you will scale up the capabilities of the server, for example. So here we are supporting the horizontal scaling. So why we need the auto scaling? There is a reason behind. Okay. So in, when we look at the graph, okay, the uh, blue line shows that, let's say it's a fixed capacity we are plan planning over the time, and the red line shows that actual usage of the um, your application. So if you look at that, there is a gap. So that gap shows there is some wasted capacity. In other words, you may be planned for a, when you look at that third height in the blue line, um, so here, so you planned only this much, but actual usage gone beyond that. We call it a spike. 
So during that time, we cannot accommodate the user request. So it's unexpected spike. This is the two major problem if you go to any cloud applications. That's where the auto scaling comes and help you. So this is the overview of what we are going to do today. When you look at here, so there is uh, five components involved. So up down performance, it's nothing but the monitoring your applications and there are certain rules. So when the performance going up or down, when the scaling situation arises, what to do, whether you want to scale up or scale down, that you can define by the rules, okay. When the situation arises and you you gone through the set of rules on you found out what to do, then the orchestration will take care of you to actually bring up or bring down. So the orchestration will talk to the compute. The compute here it means like Nova Cinder who are involved in your cloud applications. It can be a storage or it can be a network. Okay. After that, any cloud applications which needs the load balancing. Newton already provides load balance as a service. So here, these are the components involved in the cloud application. So Monosca will be taking care of the monitoring. So Heat will be taking care of defining the rules on what to do and whether you want to scale up or scale down. You can define such a scenario. Also, it, it does the orchestration part. And uh, Newton provides the load balancing. So before getting into uh, real auto scaling. Let us see what is the Monosca. So Monosca is a highly performance, scalable, and fault tolerant and extensible monitoring service. It's uh, growing a lot in our uh, OpenStack community. So currently, it provides metrics for service infra platform and applications. And future, they are planning for creating events for logs, lifecycle, and usage, etc. So auto scaling, we saw that in LSA, auto scaling is mainly provided by the heat. Let us talk about a little bit about heat before getting into auto scaling. So what's heat? So heat is a op op open st open stack orchestrator. So like if you go to AWS, it has um, cloud formation. Similarly, for uh, in open stack, heat provides. So in addition, heat provides the feature for auto scaling and software deployment on configurations. So how it provides all these features? Okay, it gives the template. So what is template? So the moment you say like any cloud applications, you can declare the cloud application in a textual form it, by means of template. It provides support for hot and CFN format. We also provide something called a uh, template translator it translate your if you have a tosca model it translate the tosca into hot template using the template you can provision so okay so once you model your application in the template and given to the heat so how is heat is realizing it i mean provisioning it so heat has so many resource plugin with respective e services like nova plugin cinder plugin monosca plugin etc most of the service under the big tent already got integrated in, in the heat. So once you define your cloud application as a template, you can spawn as many cloud applications from there using heat. So whenever you spawn a new instance of a template, we call it as a stack. Okay, so when you are provisioning a stack, you want to track its progress, how things are going on. Heat provides something called events by using the events you can track the progress. Whether some resources are creating or it's in progress or it is completed or whether it's failed, you can track all those in progress things through the events. So currently who is using uh, heat? So in community, uh, heat is heavily used by Triple O, Murano and Magnum. And if you take any cloud applications, so underneath the cloud will play the role for doing the orchestration uh, for a certain moment, 
um, software deployment, cloud application deployment also. So in HP, we are using heat for carrier grade helium. So we know now, right, uh, auto scaling is given as a feature in heat. Let us see how it is functioning. Okay, in heat, everything is, all the features are made as a resource. In that way, it helps you to customize however you want. Let us see how it. So there are certain resource plugins or the resources being made for the auto scaling. The first is scale group. Scale group helps you to group your the resources which needs the auto scaling. So each resource in the heat is tagged with namespace in the form of like uh, first we will tell like who is the cloud provider and so first part is the cloud provider and second part is which service it gives and third part is what is the uh, real uh, resource plugin. So here we have like OS, heat, then auto scaling group. If you take any resource plugin, it will have certain properties and the outputs. Properties are nothing but the inputs to the resource plugin and outputs are when you are realizing those outputs you can get from that resource. So for auto scaling, we are having, these are the, uh, these are mandatory properties like uh, the resource. That is nothing but the scaling element. The resource can be a given instance or it can be in a state template. What it means? Okay, say so when you are, when you want to scale, you can scale a given instance, say Nova instance, or you want to scale a Nova instance with a given load balancer. Even when you add a new element, you want to add that element into the load balancing. So both you can group them as a resource. So I will show you like during the demo how we are uh, using um, that nested template for auto scaling. Then decide capacity. First time when you deploy the um, your cloud application, when you say the decide capacity is two, and the resource is only the um, Nova instance, so it will create two instances at the first time. So that is nothing but the decide capacity. Also, you can define the limit whether the what the maximum it can go during the scale up, or is the minimum it can go during the scale down. So once you define this in the template and feed to the um, heat, so heat will create the auto scaling group with these things in place. So once it's provision, we can get how many, what is the current size of the uh, scale group and say like there are instances, what are the out output of those instances. Y using these two outputs, proper um, attributes, we can get those details. So let's move this to the side. The next one is the scaling policy. So scaling policy will help you the moment once the scaling situation arises, whether you want to, uh, how many elements you want to add further or how many elements you want to remove from the current uh, group. So those things are captured using the scaling policy. So first thing what it does, it, it points to the auto scaling group it belongs to. Then it has the adjustment type. There are three kind of adjustment. You can adjust like uh, you, you add plus two or remove minus two like that, even the number. Or you can say on the when the um, scaling situation occurs, you can say you always make these many numbers. Or you can say like you can uh, adjust this much of percentage. So these are the three kind of variants. You can use it for the scaling adjustment. Okay, there is something called cool down time. Okay, so scaling situation arises, it notifies the heat. So heat is in the progress of either scaling up or scale down. So it will it will take some certain time window. So during the time window, if another signal, another uh, scaling situation occurs, heat it will just ignore. So you can you can set the timing window in the cooldown parameter, property sorry. Okay. So when you create the scaling policy, it gives two kind of URL. One is uh, alarm URL or signal URL. What is the use of it? We will see in the next slide. So. Alarm, when, when, it, when you are using the alarm URL, it will go through something called CFN API in the heat. When you are using signal URL, it will go through the heat API. 
So scaling policy having dependency on the auto scaling group. The next one is alarm notification. The auto scaling group uh, on the scaling policy is provided by the heat. Now alarm notifications. Already heat is having support with the cellometer. Cellometer already provides the uh, alarming. In this demo, we'll see about uh, Monasca. And Monasca is got integrated in the heat during the liberty time. So this alarm notification is part of the um, uh, Monasca. It has two things. One is the address, another is the type. Monasca notification supports uh, with a webhook calling or email uh, notification. What it means? Say in Monasca, Monasca monitors your scale group. So something has happened. Once it, it called, it's it will create an alarm. When the alarm is generated in the Monasca, it will call whatever things you specified here in the address. So it can be of two type. Either it can be a webhook or the email. So in uh, auto scaling, we are using the type of webhook. We saw that in the scaling policy, you can generate the alarm URL or it's a signal URL. So that URL will be put as part of the address. Okay. The next one is alarm definition. Okay. So you want to define on what situation you want to uh, create the uh, scale up whether my CPU's uh, utilization gone beyond a certain limit or memory utilization gone beyond certain limit. So those kind of the thing you can define using the alarm definitions. This also provided by the Monasca. So this is the resource plugin. In the expression, you need to define those rules on like what situations you want to generate the alarm. And there is something called match by. So for uh, uh, supporting uh, auto scaling with Monasca, we should set that to scale group. In the next slide, we will see what is that scale group. Okay. So once you uh, define all these things in the alarm actions, you are going to tell that when this alarm definition, uh, the ex whatever you define the expression is satisfied, you call this alarm actions defined here. So that alarm action is nothing but the notification which you created in the previous slide. Okay. So what is that scale group? Okay. So in the first step, we saw that there is something called scale group in which you are going to pack those elements which is going to be scaled up or scaled down. Say in a scale group, there are 10 instances and the 10 has got created. Now Monasca is monitoring them. Okay. In Monasca, when those instances are monitored, it will uh, create a matrix out of it. In each matrix, it will embed that matrix belongs to whom. I mean, in our case, it's those matrix will be belongs to those 10 VMs. So all those matrix will be tagged with scale group. So here, so whenever you're de defining expression, here you are telling that uh, in the uh, expression itself, the scale group equal to whatever the unique ID information. So here I kept as a stack ID. Okay. The same scale group should be tagged as a metadata in the instances. So that when the instances are created, the Monosca agent will, when, when it they are reading the metrics for those instances, it will read those metadata as well and will push the metrics, I mean push the measurements with the scale group in place. So below I have given the wiki where I will capture all the details related to the Monosa heat integrations for auto scaling. Okay. So now we know like how the auto scaling got implemented in heat with uh, um, Monosca in place. So now let us see the workflow, what is happening. Okay. First you create the template, however you want based on your cloud applications. So once you create your uh, template with your cloud applications, so you will feed that to the heat. So heat will start to create that um, your cloud application. That means the, the auto scale group, whatever you defined, and it will go and create the alarm definitions and the notification in the Monasca. So at this stage, so at this stage, Monasca will start to monitor your scale group. So till now, 
heat has created the scale group and it set up the monosca to monitor those scale group with alarm definitions. Say like uh, when the CPU is going up or uh, um, uh, RAM is sorry, uh, memory is are going, memory utilizations are going down or up. It's defined in the alarm definition and monosca started to monitor. At this moment, auto scaling is in place and uh, it's continuously sta monosca is started to monitor. Now consider the case where alarm the scaling situation arises. So something has happened. So in this situation, whatever the <coughs> say like um, um, CPU is gone beyond the li uh, defined limit, the Monosca agent sitting on the compute node, it will monitoring those uh, instances. So now it will capture, it will identify that the <coughs> uh, met, uh, the CPU list gone up. So it will create a metric with a measurement saying that what is the scale group is there in the VM metadata and then it will capture the CPU utilization value and push that to Monasca. So once the Monasca got the measurements, it will try to evaluate, okay, those measurements or those metrics are meeting the alarm uh, definition expression. If it found that it, um, those threshold gone beyond the uh, defined threshold, then it will generate alarm for it. So once the alarm is generated in the monosca, it will trigger the corresponding notification embedded in the alarm definition. So now when you call the notification, that's nothing but the webhook, it will call the heat, okay. When the heat got that webhook calling, heat will, heat now knows that, okay, this is my scale group now I need to scale up or scale down based on how Monasco notified. Okay, so once it's um, it, it, it start to expand here in our case, we can uh, let us consider it's a scale up situation and it start to create one more instance. So once the additional instance got added and assuming that here the CPU utilization is the measuring uh, thing. so. Earlier it was two VMs, now it became three. So ultimately the CPU utilization of all these three will come down. And it runs forever. Okay. So the moment you say cloud application, there is another part. So far we know like how um, auto scaling is done with the monitoring in place. So another part is the load balancer. So Load balancer is completely provided by the um, load balancer service in the Neutron and heat supports to define them in the template. So there are three uh, resource definitions there for uh, to setting up the load balancer. So the load balancer you need to create first, that will point to the load balancer pool, then it will point to the monitor. So once you create this in the template, so next thing is auto scale resource. So initially we were discussing like okay, uh, in the auto scale group, the resource can be a given instance for example or it can be a set of instance. So in our case we are having the server is the one thing and the pool member is another thing. So pool member is pointing to the server. So you capture all of these thing as a one uh, template and use that template as a nested one in your cloud applications. So this pool number now point to the pool. So whenever this uh, the scale, auto scale resource is getting expand or sync, it will correspondingly add it to the pool or it's removed from the pool. So finally you will point that auto scale resource as part of the auto scaling group. So in this case, during the scale up, one server will be added and the new server will be added to the Newton pool. So during the scale down, one of the server will be removed from the scale group. Correspondingly, it will be removed from the pool also. Okay, let us see the demo.
okay. So I have made the demo setup, but it's not reachable from here. I'm sorry about it. But I captured the um, screenshots of those uh, demos, set of whatever I had. So I will take you all through that uh, screenshots. So this is the scaling group, whatever we had defined in the template. So here I say like uh, set the like um, extreme case for minimum size and maximum size. Here is the desired capacity. Okay. In the resource, I have pointed something called uh, load balancer, uh, lb underscore server dot yaml. Okay. So in the load balancer slide, we have seen that the auto scale resource have two things. One is the uh, OS Nova server and one is the load balancer full member. So those things are captured in the server yaml. And for them, we are feeding all the required inputs like flavor and image, key name and network. Finally, this pool ID. This pool ID will make you to connect this um, load balancer server with the given pool. And this metadata is, we are, uh, we are seeing now like the scale group. Whenever you are creating the resource element, each resource element will have the metadata of the scale group. Here I am setting the scale group as the stack ID, that is a unique. Okay. Then I have defined two things, one for the scale up policy and uh, scale down policy. So in scale up policy, I'm telling that, okay, adjust the scale by one. So it will increment the size by one. While scaling down, it will decrement by one. And I'm setting the cooldown as 60 seconds. So based on your cloud application, you can configure the cooldown as well as the scaling adjustment. Then we have two notifications. One is for the scale up notification and the scale down notifications. Though so the up notification will point to the scale up policy. The down notification will point to the scale down policy. And there are two alarm definitions, one for the scale up situation and another for the scale down situation. So for scale up situation, we have defined the um, alarm definition with average of VM CPU utilization with a scale group, given scale group ID. When it reaches, the average reaches beyond 90. And how many times? Only one time. Even it reaches one time, you generate the uh, alarm and call the uh, notifications. And we are having the alarm accents here. So this alarm accent will point to the up notification. In this CPU alarm high alarm definitions. CPU alarm low alarm definitions, it will point to the down notifications. And you need to define what is a low, uh, lower uh, limit. For the demo purpose, I put as a less than zero so that it will never do the scale down thing. But unfortunately, I couldn't access the uh, demo setup. Okay, this is your uh, LBAS setup. So you are defining the monitor, pool, and load balancer. So this is the uh, sample um, template which we are going to use for the demo. Okay. So here I created one stack. Like um, So that stack has this many resources which we define in the template. So all the resources are up now. Stack is created and all the resources are up. That means now more like uh, in, the, in the workflow slide we have seen at the fourth step, Monosca started to monitor the scale group. So at this point, Monosca is monitoring the scale group, ASG. So I captured the um, the pictorial representation of the template. Okay, so he, the left hand side you are having the LBAS setup, the right hand side you are having all the required uh, Monosca things or the uh, auto scale group, scaling policy, alarm definitions, etc. So at this moment we are in the scale group. You are having two instances, and that instance having with the load balancer pool. So 
you are having like a 200 or 58 will be your uh, load balancer IP, uh, VIP. That will, if you, when, when you run something, some run some call command on this, it will go to either 6 or 59. So I have set up the uh, load balancer in the round robin mode. So at this moment, let us see what are things are created in a different places. Okay, we saw that stack is created with all the resources. All the resources are up and running. Okay, so currently Nova has two instances. So we saw that in the scale group, we defined the decide capacity as two. So it has two uh, instances, and th they are active. And uh, the load balancer, there was one load balancer which is pointing to the 58, and there are two members which are adding to the load balancer. 59 and 6. So when you are running the load balancer uh, IP, that curl with that uh, 80, sorry, uh, 58, so one time it will point to the 6, next time it will go to the 59, so next time again it will go to the 6. So because it's uh, configured in the round robin fashion. So this is the our initial setup. So in the Monasca side, we have set up our two alarm definitions. So one with uh, CPU utilization, which is greater than uh, 90, another is less than zero. And uh, so when you are showing that alarm definition, it is pointing to the, it has created with the scale group as a match by, and it is pointing to the alarm accents of this ID. If you look at this ID, the down, So that ID will be nothing but the scale of policy, whatever the notification we created. So this is the initial setup. Okay, now, now we are going to trigger the uh, CPU load on one of the server. Okay, okay. on the um, server 200.6, I'm going to increase the CPU load. Okay. Also, um, I, as part of this uh, demo, when I captured, I increase the load on the 59 also, the 200.59 server also. So when the load is going up, Monasca will start to capture those CPU metrics. Uh, we call it as a measurement in the Monasca, and it will push those measurement into the, um, the Monasca agent push those measurement into the Monasca API server. Okay, from the Monasca API, we can start to capture those uh, measurements. So if you look at here, the measurement list for this metric, okay, under dimensions with the scale group, whatever we have created. Okay, this is a scale group. So it has already showed up beyond 90. So when this situation happens, Monasca will start to create the alarm and it will call the notifications. So earlier Monasca has created one alarm within a okay state. When the situation occurred because of the CPU got increased, so now it has created the, alarm, uh, the same alarm, it changed the state to, from okay state to alarm state and the CPU utilization average become 100.5. So it, it, it went to 100.5. Okay. So how we know like on the heat side it actually called that webhook. So we created the something called web server scale up policy. The scale up policy always gives us that webhook, right? So we want to confirm that Monasca has called that webhook. So earlier it was in um, 
create complete state. The moment uh, Monasca calls a heat through the web hook, this resource will change it to signal complete state. That confirms that signal that web hook notification reached the heat. Okay. Once heat uh, received that web hook signal, it will start to scale up or scale down. In our case, it is a scale up. So now it has created, it increased the one more uh, server. Okay, so if you look at the, so if you look at the IP, the new IP graded was uh, 200.62. So now we are having three servers and up and uh, up and running. So when you look at so when the when the new server got added, the server will automatically got into the load balancer pool. So the load balancer pool will source that uh, new member here, and when you run the load balancer, it will start to round robin across those three uh, servers now. So earlier it was six and fifty nine. Now it added one more thing, sixty two. So that ends the demo part. Uh, any questions? Yeah, sure. One by one, please. Okay, the scale group concept is uh, the feature which is in the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And also the skill, skill group ID in the metric as part of metric. Okay, so when you are creating the alarm definition, we are attaching that scale group ID. Monasca agent is smart enough to tell, uh, to send a metric saying this is CPU utilization, it's also the. This is the skill group ID. Exactly, you're right. Okay. Okay. Uh, can uh, Solometer also do the same thing? Okay, Solometer also function in the similar manner. The metadata will be a different name, but it functions in a similar manner. I see. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Oh. What's the address of the that you are throwing at the web hook? What kind of address you are throwing uh, to trigger the heat? You you should <coughs> alerting the site as web hook. Right? Okay. So you should be writing a URL there. Yes. And what kind of URL it is? And are you posting some JSON to this or is, is it an heat API or what it is? Okay. So in heat we are running uh, in heat we are there are two kind of APIs. One is the CFN API and another is uh, um, heat API. So CFN API runs in eight thousand port. And uh, um, heat API runs in 8004 8, port. So when you are creating the uh, um, scaling policy, okay, once scaling policy is created, if you get, try to get the alarm URL or signal URL, it will give that URL with one of the heat API or um, CFN API. Okay, that's the URL part. The authentication part. If you suppose if you are choosing the um, signal URL, that is nothing but it will go through the heat API. That means uh, authentication will happen through the heat. I mean normal Kishun authentication. So if you are choosing through the CFN, I mean uh, alarm URL, so that will go to the <coughs> CFN API. Okay, there already uh, pre-authentication is set up. So whoever is calling that uh, webhook, uh, it will automatically acknowledge them. So I'll just uh, go back to that slide. Okay, sorry. So if you look at here, <coughs> so this is nothing but the uh, alarm URL. 
So the port is 8000 and then uh, so if you look at it will embed with all the uh, scale of policy and then group as well as some unique ID signature. Hirashi provision the Manaska, right? Ah, uh, yeah, this one is with the Manaska, yeah. Uh, when as part of the step three, right? He actually provisioned the Manaska with this particular webhook. Uh, uh, he generated the webhook and given that to uh, Manaska as part of notification creation. Yes, yes. Uh, how does uh, Manaska gather the metrics? Okay. So, m in Manaska, uh, what they do for, for example, capturing the VM metrics. So they place on Monaska agent on the all compute node. Okay. For a KVM, so you will place on the KVM node. So it will start to poll every minute. So when it's poll, what it does, it will collect the metrics from the KVM one side. And it will try to associate those metrics for those servers created in the Nova, via Nova. Okay. So say there are like uh, two servers got created via Nova. So for those two server, it will collect the metrics from the KVM and will keep it in, in its cache. And every one minute, it will it, it, it does that polling. And uh, simultaneously, it will forward those measurements to the Monasca API. When it's forwarding, it will forward those metrics or the measurements with the scale group ID in place. Mm. So the agent is running on the compute node, not on each VM. Yeah. Okay. So as part of the implementation, we have made changes in the Monasca area as well to make that enhancement. Higher than, than one minute, it's just the polling interval is one minute. Is that correct? Uh, that can be configurable actually. I, is there any reason uh, you guys have created your own agent and not using uh, the Lambda agent? Okay, so today in community we are having like a cellimeter as well as Monosco for monitoring. So this is all about the monitor, uh, mo um, using Monosco. But the same thing is there in the cellimeter as well. Okay, uh, 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 let me rephrase my question. Um, I assume this solution also works if customer has a Solometer agent and provide a similar metric. Am I correct? Okay. It should work. <coughs> when you are creating a template, instead of creating a Monosco notification and the alarm definition, you should go for a uh, mm, cilia meter alarm creation. That's the only difference. I see. Thank you. Okay. On the Um, I think Monasa is having that capability. If you want to add a new matrix, you can go and add it. That's available. And uh, I'll actually, I will share one um, wiki page where I will capture this. Uh, Monasa already provides a set of metrics. So I will add that uh, link into that wiki page. Thanks. Yeah, please. interval is one minute at Monasca. Uh, so how much is this thing to real time? I mean, when, okay. when, when you increase the load balance, will it scale up after one minute or <coughs> after 15 seconds? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Okay, so the polling interval you can configure in the agent set. So as you said, in your case, it's a 15 seconds. Yeah, here it's, uh, I think by default it is 60 second actually. So every one minute it will pull actually. This is the interval that you see at the web, web UI. I mean, the agent collects the metrics at Monasca every 15 seconds, but you see the result after one minute later at Monasca. That's what I am asking. So is this thing working uh, depending on the agent interval or the pushing interval? Okay. It depends on the pushing interval. So, uh, so everything will happen after one minute. Exactly. So Monasca first should identify something is happened. Uh, it should generate the alarm. So once alarm generate only, the auto scaling will be signaled. And last question. Uh, <laughs> normally the alarm Sorry. occurs simultaneously. Every time the threshold exceeds, the alarm is triggered. Right. So, <coughs> so every time you are calling the web URL, is it scaling all the time or it's happening one time? How do you configure it? 
okay first thing is you can define like say my threshold should reach like 10 times before creating the alarm that you can set in the expression alarm definition expression okay there you can control okay assuming that you control there and every 10 times it keep on sending the uh, alarm okay next it will go to the scale group the scale group we have the limit what is the maximum limit what is the minimum limit so it will expand or sink within that limit is that answer thanks yeah please so uh, can we guarantee a, any time uh, uh, for, from, from the agent data so for, see if let's say the compute nodes uh, cpu utilization is going high let's just say that is a metric but agent itself is a process on the compute nodes right yeah. so you may not even get the cpu cycle to figure out there is a cpu utilization being a high so any i mean is it in, in a real time right can we even guarantee the 15 seconds or uh, can we even guarantee any notification from agent ba uh, back to the monasca controller uh, or something Be because you are you are yourself a process on that compute node right? right it's a it's completely depending on the polling cycle it's nothing else no, I'm you are yourself a process so you also need a cpu to run it so R right no, no, it's not monitoring the compute node CPU. <coughs> it's monitoring the instance running on that KVM. But you can also monitor the uh, uh, infrastructure. Ex uh, we are, uh, okay, you are, uh, the, your question is very well valid, and uh, we are doing that in our he HP Helion. So once you deploy, we will completely monitor the, our uh, uh, OpenStack environment through the Monasca. So in that way, we are monitoring the uh, compute node as well. You are right. Uh, it's up to your cloud applications. Okay, uh, I'm I'm sure there is no limit theoretically, but we have not done any like a benchmarking like how many uh, groups can go for it. <coughs> but it's up to your cloud applications. Sorry, sorry, last time you did, uh, I checked the. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, sorry. Is there a way like to do a manual trigger of the alarm? Like, do you do you sort uh, kind of related the user defined trigger? Like, I want my application to. Uh, manual in the sense, uh, so uh, other than the monosa, can we trigger the auto scaling manually? Yeah, manually. Uh, can there be a service just like a video game, and then a uh, video game server, uh -huh. and then uh, the consuming to three VMs, mm -hmm. and then the application itself monitors how many VMs are active in the game. So mm -hmm. when it's less than three VMs, it requests for one. Mm -hmm. So instead of depending on the performance of the uh, VM, okay. it's uh, Basically, it depends on it. It depends on uh, its own metrics. Okay, so it's uh, so in our case, I have used uh, Monasca. Mm, uh, most of the like cloud application will be depending on the your uh, OpenStack infrastructure. But uh, the moment you want to utilize the uh, um, auto scaling, it's all like who is going to call that webhook. So in your case, your application is going to call. Oh, okay. so I can call the, uh, application to the yeah. It will get generated for each scaling policy, whatever you are defining. Yeah, it will be unique. Yeah. Okay. So the moment you are going to use the user set, you you need to end up using that. There are two kind of URL, right? One is alarm URL, another is signal URL. So that signal URL it will go through the heat API. So the heat API is having the authentication authorization behind it. So you should, should users should have the right uh, authentication in order to make that signal. Uh, attack is, is is still waiting in Java. Is it is still the case uh, for uh, the release? Is it waiting no, in Python right now? I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take the question offline. Uh, I'll just stop that. I'll come to you. Wow.